let's reset for a brand new month. Hi everyone, I'm alive. I know I haven't been around here much lately. Things have been very busy, but I thought we would sit down and do our monthly reset video where we talk about what we read, what we loved, what we did, and we set goals for the future. So grab your coffee and your planner and let's go. But first, if you're new around here, hi, my name is Lydia Sin and I talk about frugal and simple living. I think that you can save time and save money and live a beautiful life. So if that's what you're into, I would love for you to subscribe and join our little community. So it is finally July. June was very good to my family. I hate to see it go, but I get to start a brand new planner. So I've started using a planner that aligns with the school year and not necessarily the calendar year. And so this one is July to June. And so I get to start it today. This is made by the Every Girl. Don't love the name, but I like the planner. I picked it up at Target and I just think it's very simple and suits my needs. So let's dive in and recap June because it was such a fun month filled with a lot of great surprises for our family. So we started off the first week of June at our church's camp. Every year they do a day camp from 8.30 in the morning to 2.30 in the afternoon. And this was the first time in many years that I've gotten to volunteer, simply because it falls at a time where I've either been very pregnant, had a newborn, been going through something really difficult, or last year, I ended up going with my mom out of town to celebrate her birthday. So my kids get to go, but I haven't been able to participate. And this year I was able to volunteer. I helped in the art department, which is a little outside my comfort zone because I'm not artistic. But my oldest son was my youth helper. How was he in youth already? I am kind of still um, <laughs> coming to terms with the fact that I have a junior high schooler an upper elementary, lower elementary, and now a preschooler, and my baby days are behind me. That is just crazy to me because those little years have consumed my life for so long, and I'm going to miss them. But um, it was really a good opportunity, but camp was wonderful for many reasons, and one of them was I really got to know my neighbor. She's lived across the street from me for about five years now, but we don't have the opportunity to just sit and talk. And she's a wonderful neighbor to me. Here are two separate <laughs> circumstances. My lawnmower broke earlier this month. It is at the shop. Hopefully it's coming back today. But I took over the yard work last year. My husband has lupus. And lupus makes you photosensitive. You don't need to spend a lot of time in the sun. And my husband works outside. And so I thought, I'm going to take this off his plate. It's one less thing for him to have to do. And I went to cut the grass. My lawnmower, the belt was messed up and my grass needed to be cut. And so I went on a Facebook group and I said, can I pay someone to come and cut my grass? My neighbor immediately texted me and said, what are you even talking about? I'm coming over now to cut your grass. Then last week I had back-to-back -back appointments with a child and my babysitter called at the last minute. She was sick. I didn't know what to do. I called my neighbor. She said, bring them over. And she kept my kids for three and a half hours and wouldn't let me pay her. I, you don't, you don't get many people like that in your life. And when you get them, love them well. But after an amazing week at camp, we got the opportunity to travel with my husband. So he travels often for work and we don't really get to go with him too much, but he was going to Kansas City, Missouri. We've never been. We packed up and we stayed at this cute little campground called Basswood outside of Kansas City. And I have to say, I loved Kansas City. I felt very safe while I was there. I did a lot of things alone with my children. It was easy to get to. It was easy to navigate. The traffic wasn't bad. When I was there, the humidity was pretty low, which I had several people from Missouri say, oh, just wait. But I went to Kansas in August of 2021. I was there when it was 105 degrees and my family and I hiked like three and a half miles and it just didn't feel that hot to us because where we live it is a swamp it is a swamp but <laughs> we really enjoyed the city um we went to the legoland play center not legoland it's an indoor play area it was wonderful we went to the aquarium the zoo we went to this wonderful place called rabbit hole which is a children's literary museum type thing my mom had read about it in the new york times and so when she saw that we were going to kansas city she said you have to go to this and 
oh my goodness, if you live in the area, you need to go. It's this series of tunnels, rabbit burrows, and you go down the rabbit hole and you emerge in this immersive literary experience for children. You are sitting in my mother's chair. You are having jam, not literally, with uh, Francis. <laughs> you are seeing my father's dragon. You are going to the e where the sidewalk ends. You were in Sal's kitchen where her mom is making blueberry jam. It was so wonderful. I absolutely loved it. Let's talk about what I read. So I had this idea that I was going to listen to this whole book series as I drove back and forth from Kansas City, but what I ended up doing instead was listening to lectures because I have a big certification exam coming up that I need to prepare for, and what else was I going to do in the car all that time? So I listened to those lectures. I also listened to a really interesting podcast called Blame It on the Fame, which was all about Millie Vanilli, which kind of predates. I don't really remember Millie Vanilli. I, I would have been too young for that to be on my radar, but it has come up so much in the pop cultural zeitgeist that it's referenced often. And so it was really interesting to go back and, and listen to what actually happened, what actually occurred. No one is saying that these two men didn't lip sync, but what what led to the scandal itself. Um, so I ended up reading one in, well, actually I ended up reading more than these books. We'll talk about that. Um, so I ended up reading Number the Stars and The Witch of Blackwood Pond, Blackbeard Pond. They're middle grade books that my oldest son is reading for lit, next year. They're part of his required reading. And so I wanted to read them first because as his teacher, I need to discuss them with him. And they were both excellent. So that counts. <laughs> the next book that I read was Starling House by Alex Harrow. I got this at the library. It looked interesting. It was on the new bookshelf. And this was a wild ride for me. It's outside of my usual genre. I would describe it as... Southern Gothic meets magical realism. Stranger Things meets Persephone. If none of those appeal to you, you're going to hate this book. But when I talked about it on Instagram, I got two camps. One was, oh my gosh, this was one of my favorite books of the year. Her town is just dying, but there's a heavy darkness that hangs in the air. There's a house called Starling House. The person who lives in it is a mystery. Like, what? It, people always live there, but then they die. And someone else shows up and lives there. And what is this house? What hold does it have? And what connection does it have to the coal mining slash electric company? And what connection does it have to the otherworldly? The second book, I'm almost finished with this one, so I'm actually going to kind of transfer it to July, is Murder Road by Simone St. James. I feel like I can't go wrong with Simone St. James. I have read quite a few books of hers. Um, the most notably would be The Sundown Motel. I think that's what it's called. Um, also, do you like the little bookmark I made with my daughter? I got these kids. They're the, um, I don't know what you call them. They're the kids at Target, Little Craft Wins. They're magnets, but I thought I would use it as a bookmark. Anyway, so I'm about halfway finished. Um, so we'll talk about whether or not I liked it in July, but a couple on their honeymoon driving on a road trip picks up a hitchhiker. The hitchhiker dies. Chaos ensues. So I'm going to finish that. And then the next book I'm going to read in August, hold on, I have it on my phone, All the Colors of the Dark by Chris Whitaker. So it is a mystery that takes place over the course of a woman's life. Um, as a child, her friend stops her from, I think, being kidnapped, and then that friend disappears, and then she, as an adult, goes looking for him. So that just sounded interesting, so I'm going to read that one on my phone. Also, my husband started the Passage series by Justin Cronin. He's been listening to it as he 
travels for work and he said it's excellent so far. So there's a little recommendation from my husband who really likes uh, sci-fi world building. Mm, not my jam, but okay. So something that we watched recently on Netflix that we really enjoyed was How to Rob a Bank. It is a documentary about Hollywood who was a bank robber in Seattle in the 90s and they called him Hollywood because he wore prosthetics to rob the banks and he was prolific. He robbed like 18 times in, the, in a matter of years and kept getting away with it. And so this is a documentary about who he was, how the FBI investigated, how the police investigated the tension between these departments but also who was he what led to him being a bank robber i really enjoyed it now i will say here's a caveat they use home footage so footage that this person filmed of themselves and people filmed of him and he was a bit of a nudist so there's a little bit of that um which i felt found unnecessary like you could have alluded to him being a nudist without showing me everything that was going on um but if you like documentaries which I do um I really enjoyed that one and it wasn't salacious it was pretty cut and dry like this is what happened this is how the police caught him while still maintaining his humanity I don't enjoy true crime where it's this person's story, this victim who, who was a part of a very brutal crime, their humanity is stripped away and we're just here for all the salacious details. I don't enjoy that. But here's a person, this is what happened, this is their story, that, I don't know, I feel like when done right, true, true crime has its place, but it's not always for entertainment purposes. My camera died, so now I have to finish this on my phone. Okay, so let's talk about what some of our goals are for July hour. It's just me over here. <laughs> so some of my goals for July. So I have a certification coming up. It's two different tests, and my goal is to have that completed by the end of July. I feel good about it. I'm sitting for the first test soon, so I'm going to do two weeks and then two weeks. Um, so I'll hmm, hopefully, hopefully that'll work out for me. My second goal is to have all my kids' curriculum ordered. Usually this is something I have done already, but I don't. I don't have it done yet. We start August 15th. August 15th. And so I need to get that ordered. It's going to be a lot more this year. It's going to be a lot more expensive. And so really budgeting for that, ordering it, seeing what we really need, what we can buy used, what we can swap, and come up with a plan for that. Three, we are going on a little family trip. And so getting packed and planned for that. And I'll talk more about that in my August video, but this is something that a kid asked for for their birthday and so we're making it happen and it's just really exciting. We're excited to do that. Fourth goal, get all of our extracurriculars for the next year scheduled around, around, ugh, this is hard to talk about, my daughter's therapy schedule. So she's going to be doing therapy five days a week for multiple hours a day. Uh, she has autism, if you didn't know, and it's, this is a lot it's a lot to take on but we're excited to be able to take it on time wise and financially but it does require a lot of logistics on our part of knowing okay when does when does this child have karate when does this child have gymnastics because i want my other kids to get to experience life and this not be our entire world and that's a balance but it's a balance worth balancing Something that I haven't been sure I even want to talk about is, you know, I am in school. I should be wrapping up soon. It's taking longer than I had anticipated for a number of reasons. But one of my fears is what if I get to the end of this and I'm unable to find a job because my daughter's needs really are like a full-time job. And I was talking to my husband about this and he said, if you don't, you don't. You still finished you still did the work, you still earned the degree, and it's not like you're never gonna use it. 
And so just knowing that I, I did what I felt like I was supposed to, and maybe it didn't work out the way that I thought it would, but maybe it'll work out better. Different doesn't mean bad. Okay, let's do some journal prompts. So the first question is, what is one of your favorite childhood summer memories? Okay, so one of the things that sticks out the most in my mind is the summer that my mom and all of us really got into a daytime soap opera. So I was in middle school and I remember one day it storming raining. We had summer we had to be that morning and on the way home, we ran by a grocery store. We got pulled pork sandwiches and ice cream and we sat on the couch and we watched this ridiculous soap opera together. So dumb. My second is just loading up in our little family car and driving to Johnson's Beach, the national seashore in Florida. It is a federal, it's federal lands, um, but you can swim on it, which by the way, I went um, a couple weeks ago with my sister and her family. If you have a fourth grader, you can get a free parks pass to get you into any national parks. You can just Google that and find information but we use the pass to go and it's good for the whole year you can use it multiple times but we use that pass to go to the seashore it was fun to be there as parents with our kids and and all the memories that we have of being there as a child but just getting to share those memories with our kids and they've added a parking lot and some boardwalks and it looks really nice so let's do a mid-year check-in so how has 2024 treated you so far and what have you learned 2024 has not been easy I really thought 2023 was rough, the second half. Um, the first half of 2024 may have been rougher, but it's going to be okay. And that's just kind of become my mindset of, well, it's going to be okay because it has to be. It's going to work out because it has to. And I don't have a whole lot of control over how it goes, but I do have control over my attitude. And that is can that can really change the way that you view something and it really all circles back to different doesn't mean bad it just means different it's it's embracing a little bit of chaos at times it's choosing peace over other people's opinions um but it's it's understanding that okay this may not be what i planned but i can still find joy in this and maybe it will be something better. I would love to know what your goals are for July. Leave me a comment below and tell me thank you for being here and I'll talk to you soon.